IOTA cryptocurrency, IOTA explained. What is IOTA coin, IOTA crypto? Here's your review from a software engineer. So I was aware of IOTA, but I really never taken a chance to take a look at it until a bunch of you guys started asking me to do a review on IOTA. Well, here it is. What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna explain how IOTA really works because I watched some other IOTA videos on YouTube and it was just a bunch of fluff. It didn't really get into the details. So what you're going to get is you're gonna take a look at how Bitcoin blockchain works and how IOTA is different with the use of its tangle, which is a directed acyclic graph. And we're gonna talk a lot about that, but what that actually is is because how they explained it is pretty technical. So I'm gonna try my best to dumb that down a bit so that many people like you and I can understand if we didn't have any technical background. So like I said before, I am not an expert with IOTA. I just found it and I read the white paper and I'm trying to regurgitate what I learned about IOTA to you who might be a little bit confused when reading the white paper because it was actually very mathy and I struggled with that a lot as well. The architectural concepts was easier to understand if you had a technical background. I guess going to computer science school actually did prove valuable in some sense. If you know a little bit more about IOTA than what I have gathered, then please share with us in the video so we could all I'll learn from you. I really appreciate it when people make comments to help me expand my own knowledge and fill in the holes to the knowledge that I'm sharing. So with that being said, if you haven't already, please smash the subscribe button, smash the like button. Now let's talk about what is IOTA coin. So this review actually takes a look at the first white paper because recently IOTA made a big upgrade and that I'm going to save for another video. But we're going to take a look at history and see what they originally made Tangle for. So Tangle is the main feature of IOTA. It's a directed AC cyclic graph, which you can pronounce as DAG, used for storing transactions. It is seen as the next evolution of the blockchain, and it offers features that are required to establish a machine-to-machine -machine micropayment system. All right, so what does that mean? What's the problem? So the problem is really aiming at Bitcoin's problem. And this is not really only a problem with Bitcoin, but also with Ethereum, whereas the transaction fees can sometimes be more than the amount that you're sending. So when there are a lot of transactions being made on the blockchain, the transaction fee can be, let's say, $20 when only you're trying to send $5. That doesn't make any logical sense. So IOTA is trying to fix that. Their belief is that micropayments will be a very big thing and more important in the rapidly developing Internet of Things industry or IoT industry. And paying a fee larger than the amount of the transaction is simply not logical. And with IOTA, the idea is you can send a fraction of a cent for free. The thing is with blockchains, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, you can't get off fees. There will always be fees because there must be an incentive for miners and stakers to validate transactions and create blocks. So Tangle works like this. Instead of a global blockchain, there is a directed acyclic graph or DAG called the Tangle. And this DAG can be used as a ledger to track and process transactions without the blocks and the chains. And the game is that when a new transaction arrives, it must approve two previous transactions. So this whole entire idea removes the transaction speed because instead of having miners and stakers validate the transactions, the newest transaction that comes in will validate the previous two transactions. Now this tangle is made up of a network of nodes that issue and validates transactions. And these transactions, they have another name for them. They are called sites on the Tangle graph, but you don't really need to know all that. All you really need to know basically is that if you want your transaction to be approved, you must approve or validate two previous transactions. And this contributes to the whole entire network security. Transactions that get more approvals in the system are seen with higher confidence. This gets around the double spending problem. And the great thing about this is that any device, your computer, your phone, any device can really run the algorithm behind the scene to approve transactions. So instead of investing in heavy equipment like what you need to mine Bitcoin or mine Ethereum, heavy mining rigs that are based in China, in Iceland, where energy is cheaper, instead of making millions of dollars in investments in that, you can just literally use your computer and use your phone and use that as a rig to validate transactions. And the whole premise, the whole idea behind this is that with millions and billions of people in the world, all making transactions, the more people that gets on IOTA, that means the faster and more secure the network. That is not the case for Bitcoin or Ethereum or other similar blockchains. So automatically with Tangle and the DAG, it is automatically more faster and more secure than Bitcoin and the proof of work method. In addition, for Bitcoin, every single node needs to keep a copy of the blockchain, the entire transaction history of Bitcoin, which is huge. For Tangle, you don't need to hold the entire copy. 
you only need the most recent transactions that need verification. Again, there are no miners, which means that there are no fees. You're only going to be validating transactions if you're going to be using IOTA. All right, guys, so if everything I just said didn't make any sense to you, then just basically think of it like this. Think of it like Tetris. I'm sure all of you have played Tetris before. Now, what happens when you drop a block to the very bottom? It evaluates whether it fits nicely with the block to the left and the block to the right two transactions. If it does, then it clears it. With blockchain, it's a little bit different. If you drop a block all the way down to the bottom, blockchain solves a puzzle. That means it's going to keep trying and trying and trying and trying again to see if the block fits. So it's like taking the block that is dropped and instead of only checking the left and the right, it checks the block to the left of the left of the block and the block to the right of the right of the block. It checks how it fits to all the blocks instead of just checking to the left block and the right block and seeing if it fits. So that's how I see it as the difference between what they're doing with DAG and what they're doing with blockchain. So like I said before, there are no rewards for mining or staking IOTA because it doesn't exist. All the supply of IOTA has already been minted since the Genesis transaction. And this transaction sent tokens to founder addresses, that is the early adopters. No tokens will be made in the future and there is no mining, remember that. The idea is that IOTA is permissionless, fee-less, and production ready when it was created. Now, when we look at the supply, you might think this is crazy because there's 2.7 quadrillion IOTA. But the supply is measured a little bit differently, whereas we have Bitcoin that has 21 million Bitcoins in existence ever. That 21 million is equal to 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis. In IOTA, we have 2.7 quadrillion IOTAs, which is equal to give or take 2.7 million giga iotas so iota only have 0.6 quadrillion more total units than bitcoin all right now let's talk about use cases so we're gonna brainstorm and envision two use cases because i looked at the site and they do have some use cases there but they are so light in content that i really wonder are these guys doing this right now or are they not is this just an idea or is this implemented? I'm going to correct myself. I did see some implementations that are already happening with companies, but they didn't have much detail in them. So maybe I didn't research hard enough or maybe they just made it really, really hard to find. What are they trying to hide? All right, first of all, let's talk about mobility and automotive. So I don't own a Tesla, but I do imagine that charging your car costs money. If you go to a Tesla charging station, it costs money. And since Tesla is probably the closest car that is connected to the internet, it does generate a lot of data. I'm not a car person, but if you're a car person, correct me if I'm wrong. Depending on how Elon wants to track you, I say it can track how often you drive, how far you drive, and how aggressively you drive. And maybe it can connect that to your driving records and tickets. Might not happen now, but it might happen in the future. I'm brainstorming here because IOTA deals with the transfer of data and value. That's what the premise is behind IOTA. And because of that premise, it only makes sense for IOTA to want to plop itself in the middle there between Tesla and the insurance companies. Transfer of data and value, right? That way, the use case is that now insurance companies can see your driving history, your driving records, and your habits and behavior when you're driving. And it can really just use that data to either increase or decrease your premium, which will make the streets safer because if you get a higher premium because of your poor driving habits, that means that's going to incentivize you to drive better. The second use case we're going to talk about is e-health, which I think they are already implementing with some providers. Thing is, insurance and e-health health providers, they are a mess. I actually hurt my back a while ago and went to physical therapy. It cost $600 and I was trying to get a claim, trying to ask my insurance company whether it's covered. So to do that, the physical therapist, actually they would go and contact the insurance companies to see whether it is covered. So there is some bit of lag time there because there's administrative work because it's still apparently handled by personnel. In addition, to get my health savings account to actually reimburse me, I actually had to call the insurance company three times, talk to three different people in order to get things to happen. So there's a lot of miscommunication because there's, I'm imagining, a lot of administrative work, data lag, and inefficiencies with the system of transferring data between health providers, insurance companies, and you as the individual. So if IOTA can similarly plop themselves in the middle there to be the middleman behind all this data and value transference, that will make things much more easier, make things much more efficient. It's gonna save the insurance companies, the health providers, a bunch of money from administrative work and save consumers like you and I a lot of frustration and grievances. So that's it for today's video on IOTA cryptocurrency, IOTA Explained what is IOTA coin? I hope.
hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Other than that, I encourage you to grab my free book Leverage. There are other ways to make money other than cryptos which we're also interested in and I want you to be aware of that so that maybe you can make these other streams of passive income in order to fund your crypto purchases. So that's what I'm doing. So I hope you can do that too. Other than that, if you haven't already, please be sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, check out these other videos that I have on cryptocurrencies and passive income and I'll see you guys again next time. Peace. Thank you.